we think travel should be more than just seeing the top 10 most beautiful things on TripAdvisor. Travel is experiencing the place, the beauty and the reality for locals. Tunisia is a land of contrasts, from golden sands and hidden beauty to the raw and unfiltered truth of a tourism industry in need of love and attention. Today, we encounter this contrast firsthand on the island of Djerba. Good morning guys and welcome to the island of Djerba in Tunisia. We have been staying at this hotel, which is also a campsite with all the facilities and it is so cheap. Let me show you around. So this was our pitch just next to like the playground. This person's letting their grey water out on the floor, which is lovely. And you can just see the hotel in the background. <laughs> just walking past the men's showers and there's an Italian guy in there like fully singing his heart out. I love it. Okay, just one moment before we go and see the hotel because this is maybe the second best thing about this hotel campsite. Hey, hey Mama. Please, can we say hello to your babies? Oh, hello, babies. <laughs> Thanks, Mama. Have a good day. So we have worked here for three days and it has been amazing. Really, really nice to just like kind of feel like we're at like a resort hotel, even though technically like we're still staying in our van so we get our home with us as well. The really, really nice balance. And I've never heard of that before. Like in all of Europe, all the 15 countries we've traveled to in our van, like we've never once been to a campsite within a hotel resort. So this is a really cool idea, I think. This is all nice and really good, but there is one thing that is definitely head and shoulders above the rest. <laughs> yeah, this is so worth it just by itself to have this kind of thing right next to the where the vans are parked as well. And when we looked this place up on Park for Night, uh, we thought that you had to pay extra for these kinds of facilities. And then when we got here, they were like, you can use them for free, baby. <laughs> well, as lovely as that was, oh my God, it's cold when you come outside. I think we need to crack on with our day, get a good shower in, get the van filled up with water, and then set off into Explore Gerba. This place cost us 40 dinar a night, which might sound expensive, but it's 10 pound for all these facilities. And now we're heading off to explore this beautiful island of Gerba. Shokran. Shokran. Using me Arabic. <laughs> My one word that I know. <laughs> So it was really nice to have all of those services for such a low cost obviously as well and especially to have grey water drop off because all of the campsites that we've stayed at so far have had no grey water point and they get very little rain here in this country so there's no like normal drains in the side of the road that we can use either and anyone that we've spoken to at the campsites has just said oh just let it out like anywhere on the road or on the side of the road and this is just such a bizarre concept to us because even though there's nothing dodgy in our grey water, it just feels weird to just let it out anywhere. So that was nice. We could actually use proper facilities for our grey water. It's the small things, you know? Camels! Just by the side. Oh, there's an old hotel there. It's completely run down. Oh. Wow. That's sad. Yeah. It's really strange actually driving around this area because as soon as you come out of the hotel that obviously you were staying in if you were here on holiday or for us obviously at Dar Djerba, um, it's kind of like a ghost of its former self in this town. Like once you're inside the resort, it's all like fancy and nice and you're in a bit of like a hotel bubble. And then outside it's a little bit run down. There's loads of stuff that's closed. It's just kind of sad.
Wow, have you seen how dirty this van is? Actually shameful. Right, we think we found a decent park up, kind of like a big wasteland area in the middle of the town, which is perfect for us. Um, and we are now heading off into a place called Gerba Hood, which sounds a little bit more dramatic than I think it is in the hood. But it's actually meant to be a really beautiful set of streets with street murals and it's meant to be really cute. So we're excited. I feel like already this one sums up Tunisia a little bit. Beauty with a little bit of grime on the side. <laughs> can't get over how one how big they are they're massive like take up the whole house but also there's loads of them and we've explored like three streets i was half expecting to be one of those places where there's like three murals and that's it but i've had seen at least 30 and we've done three streets like this is a good one this is a good find just wandering around these streets and we are so in love with like the style of Tunisian houses like yes okay they look a little bit basic from the outside but once you go through the gates like a lot of them have this kind of open air indoor courtyard which all of the rooms then come off of check this one out this is the best one yet There's so many cute doors here as well. They're like, you just look around a corner, it's like, pew, 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 pew. it's like door heaven. No, door porn. Door porn. Door porn. Right, I think we have officially completed the streets of Gerberhood. Really, really enjoyed it actually. Like, full of colour, like vibrancy, beauty, some funny ones as well. And loads of local tourists, not just international tourists nice, like ourselves. Yeah. It's really nice to see like local people coming here to enjoy it and take their photos next to the murals and stuff. So yeah, a really good stop. And there's not that many streets, like it's all quite compact. So it's just mural after mural after mural as you walk around every corner. It's really lovely. Really nice. The next morning, we decided to explore the other side of Gerba's tourist zone, passing by thriving four and five star resorts before ending up at a place where the residents are a little more fluffy. Oh my goodness. Oh my Lord. There's like 10 cats. Hello. Hi. Hi puppies. Hello everyone. Hello. Oh my goodness. This is insane. I've never seen so many stray dogs and cats in one place. They're all so friendly. Hello. Hello everyone! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you like the Pied Piper? I am! Bonjour! Can you hold me? Alma! Alma? Is it okay to look at the hotel? You're from this side! This side! Yeah. We can drive? We can drive? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay! So we have come to an area of Joba that it's not really doing so well um, from a tourism point of view. We kind of questioned this morning whether to come or whether to just leave it showing you guys the beautiful side of Gerba that we've seen, like Gerba Hood. There is also a side of Gerba that we have witnessed that we haven't shown on the camera yet and we only think it's fair that we show you that reality um, because tourism is really suffering here and it's really sad and maybe through this video we can help promote it a little bit and show that it really needs a little bit of support so we are gonna go and check out an old abandoned hotel <coughs> Thank you. 
After speaking to many locals, Tunisia has suffered a lack of tourism since the revolution in 2011, only intensified by the worldwide pandemic. Places like Karalia Beach Hotel, perched on the edge of the turquoise Mediterranean, were once buzzing with trade and tourists, but now lay in decay, covered in dust, sand and broken glass. It's so sad walking around here. Like to think that at one point this would have been a thriving holiday resort. And like you would have booked it looking at these beautiful pristine images on like TripAdvisor or Booking.com or something. And now it's just completely dilapidated. It's really, really like bizarre. That's not doesn't compute. No, not at all. Coralia 1964. This is when it opened, I think. Oh my. This is possibly the freakiest thing I've ever done in my life. Inventory, 2001. 2001, so do you think that's when it closed? I don't know, there's like orders for food, figs, six kilograms. Wow. It's got like tax receipts and how much money it was making, look at this. It's got like the signatures of the people who would have done the inventory at the hotel. Oh my god, so this one's for like, I guess like a spa or like the beauty products that go in your room. So like cotton pads, makeup pads, uh, lotion. This is just crazy. And it's like an import-export receipt. I'm amazed that we are able to actually walk around and explore here. Like, can you imagine, like, you know when you stay in an all-inclusive hotel or bed and breakfast and then like these rooms are like bustling on a morning and an evening, You've got like your bread station, your jams, your salads, your yogurts, someone's cooking like omelettes. It would have been so like full of life in here and just like buzzing. Like this would be where you would walk into your hotel room. Little bathroom. And then out onto the balcony. Out onto the balcony, yeah. So I imagine at one point this would have been like your outside courtyard with like tables and chairs in the sunshine. And just over time, the wind, storms and stuff have just pushed all of this sand to create this massive dune inside the centre of the hotel. Oh, there's the pool. Oh my God. All the sand that's just come up over the walls and into the pool where it's been left. How crazy is it that two days ago, yesterday even, we were just in a heated pool in a hotel that's working. And now I'm standing in this. What a contrast that is. Oh my god, look at stage. So this would have been like your entertainment zone. Evening entertainment, you would have been sat having shisha, cocktails. 
So I've just seen like a bunch of people riding horses along the beach over there as well like in front of this hotel because the ones that are a little bit further along this beach are still going, they're, they're still alive I guess. So it just shows that tourism really is trying here. It just needs a little bit more of an oomph from people coming back. Places like this rely on tourism. They rely on us. From what we've read online, tourism is down like 60% on pre-COVID levels for Tunisia. So that's massive. And I think Tunis um, tourism makes up like six and a half percent of their GDP or it used to. That's just massive numbers. And this place needs a break, I think. Like the people are absolutely fantastic and there's some absolutely beautiful natural spots. It just needs some love, I think, from tourists and from anyone who would be willing to pay a visit. It's really, <clears throat> it's really impactful being in here and thinking about a previous life for this building. That's so sad. So I know this feels like we are going through like a really somber moment towards the end of this video but it's for a really important reason and even if one or two other van lifers decided that Tunisia would be an option for their out of Schengen time that could make a huge difference to the local people here a local hotel or a fruit seller that you buy your you know your morning fruit from or local businessman that you buy i don't know mugs or t-shirts or local pottery that they make here local rugs like all of that stuff could mean the world to the people that live here so yeah if you are considering where to go outside of the schengen zone then so far we've been here for a month and we would highly recommend tunisia <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha